guys, it's Tilly and today I am doing my August wrap up video. So I read a huge 13 books this month which was like setting me back on my track because I'm way ahead of my Goodreads goal and my TBR pile is actually going down. So I'm very happy. I've read more books than I actually bought this month so that's like a huge accomplishment. And so I'll just jump straight in. I won't talk about all of them in depth but I will leave a link to my Goodreads below where you guys can read my full reviews on them there. First up we have An Ember in the Ashes by Sabah Tahir and I don't know why I put off reading this book for so long because it was so amazing. Amazing. It was a little slow to get into at first, but as soon as like I got through that, I was sucked into this book and as well and these characters and I am fully invested. I am so excited because the second book is like out in I think like 10 days or something like that. So that means that I get to read it soon, but then I have to, you know, join in the year-long wait for the third and then two year wait for the fourth book and it's just, why does it have to take so long? Next up we have A Nerve by Jan Ryan. You guys have probably heard me talk about this in my last few videos because I am pretty much already obsessed with the movie for this book. I've only seen the trailer and yet I absolutely love it. So it features Emma Roberts and Dave Franco, so I kind of just know it's going to be great already off that. And the book itself was pretty average, it wasn't anything amazing, there's a lot of faults in it and am I wrong to say that I think the movie will be better than the book? I don't think so but when I see the movie which will be like the minute it's released I will let you guys know what I think. So this next one I only counted as one book even though it was five volumes of a graphic novel called Finding Molly and Adventure in Cat Sitting. So it was Emmett Comics who sent me through this webcomic. Um, I read it all really quickly. It was a fun quick read with characters that you really like and it's really diverse which makes it awesome. So this one was by Justine Prado and Jen St. Onge. You follow Molly and her story and and her life revolves around art and cat sitting. And it was really fun. The company that made this is going to be doing a Kickstarter campaign a few weeks, maybe a month, to publish these as actual graphic novels, which I'm super excited for because it was so good. The Outliers by Kimberly McCrate, and I just didn't enjoy this book. It just wasn't for me. It might be for other people, but I didn't like it. Um, so this is a mystery thriller. So this book is about a girl called Wiley. Uh, she's have a pretty rough past, and now her best friend is missing. So when her best friend's boyfriend walks up at her house and says, we need to go on this trip to go find uh, my girlfriend, she jumps on board and they go on this really hectic adventure to go and find her best friend. Their memory book by Lara Avery, and this book was good. Um, there was parts I liked about it, parts that I didn't like, but there is no doubt in my mind that this wasn't a really hot aching book. So this book is about a girl called Sam who has a very rare disease that slowly steals her memories from her and then basically her health as well um, but she's in a rare minority where no one her age has had this disease before and so no one really knows how it's going to go and it's just her dealing with this disease and dealing with life at the same time and like I said it was good and heartbreaking. So if you're gonna read it I recommend having tissues nearby. I didn't cry but I was close. And for this next book, a huge shout out to Books by the Dozen. I will leave a link to her Instagram below because she sent me out this Savage Song by Victoria Schwab and I just love it so much. This is one of my favorite books that I have read this month. Not only is it because like it's a beautiful cover and hardcover and signed, but the story itself was absolutely amazing. I love the concept of it and everything about it. And if you guys haven't heard of it yet, you're about to. So you have two protagonists in this story. The first one is Kate Harker, who is this mean, chick that you like anyway who is ruthless and brutal and just like her mob father and you can tell she's actually a cinnamon roll but you follow her story as she goes back to the city that they live in which they call V City and goes to school there because that's all she's ever wanted is to make her father proud and then you also have August Flynn who is an actual cinnamon roll and you will love him so much the only thing is though that he's a monster he is a soul eater and he is adorable. You just love him, okay? And he wants to help his father out, who is like the enemy of Kate's dad. So it's like two mobs cut down the middle with very different lifestyles and somehow their lives get thrown together when August goes to Kate's school and someone attempts to assassinate her and they have to help each other to get out of that situation. And it's so good, so good. Just like Ember in the Ashes, it was a bit slow to get into, but trust me, when you do, you will get sucked in. Next up we have Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. 
uh, parts one and two by J.K. Rowling, uh, John Tiffany, and Jack Thorne. And this was, once again, a very average book. I enjoyed it because there's more of the Harry Potter world, more of these characters, more cinnamon rolls that I can love, but at the same time, it was not the best plot in the world. I think we can all agree on that. I have a love-hate relationship for it, but I love reading script, so it's like... This next book is so beautiful, and it is It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. And not only is this cover amazing, but the story is too. So this follows the story of Lily, who has a pretty rough past. And one night, as she's on a rooftop, uh, she sees this mysterious, handsome, gorgeous, obvious love interest of hers come onto this roof and start kicking things around. And they have an almost kiss moment, but then they don't see each other for quite a while. And when they do, things just are on the right path and they start dating and it's all going well. Until it stops going well. And introducing Lily's ex-boyfriend called Atlas, who you guys hear about in kind of like flashback stories that she writes in her journal, which she dictates to Ellen DeGeneres, which makes it amazing. So not everything is as it seems in this book, but it's just so perfect at the same time. You're faced with harsh truths and also consequences that come with reality in this book and it was so good, so good. I also read two poetry books this month, which is my first ever poetry books, and I absolutely loved them. The first one was Milk and Honey by Rupi Kerr, and this is just breathtakingly beautiful. It's told in four parts of the author's story, and it's just, oh, it was so good. It just, it's one of those like life-changing kind of books that you read these quotes and then stick with you forever. And also one of my new favorite books for all time is The Princess Saves Herself in this one by Amanda Lovelace. This one is two told in four parts, and it was just heartbreaking and uplifting and perfect in every single way. Next up we have another absolutely gorgeous book because Man, people are doing covers right these days. And that is We Awaken by Calista Lynn. So this book was extraordinary. Not only does this book feature a sexual protagonist, it also gives the readers an insight into that sexuality while putting it in with a really fun, like, real-life fantasy story. And it was, it was so good. So you have Victoria, whose dad has just died, and her brother is in a coma, and she is trying her hard out to get into this dance academy. And when one night she is dreaming, and Ashlyn, this dream girl, comes into her mind with a message from her comatose brother. Pretty much she starts to live for these dreams that come to her every night and she finds that she can really be herself around Ashlyn who helps her to discover her asexuality. And when something happens and Victoria's gonna be late for her dance audition, Ashlyn takes the form of a human to help her get there on time and they take the opportunity then to pretty much spend the day together. But unfortunately Ashlyn can't always be in this human form so it's... Yeah, it's just, it's, it's, you have to read it. This next book I received from Penguin as an ARC, so thank you guys for sending that book out. And there's Our Chemical Hearts by Crystal Sutherland. So this book comes out, I think, the 4th of October, and it is like a YA contemporary romance, um, but it is also one with a bit of a twist. And the first thing you see on here is that first love is an epic disaster. You know from the very get-go, it's not going to be a typical romance where they're just going to fall in love, and yeah. So I gave this book an average rating, there were things that I didn't like in the story and things that I did, but most of all my favourite thing was the writing in this book, Crystal Sutherland. It's very poetic and beautiful and yet she makes it a very easy book to read at the same time. And lastly I read The Only Thing Worse Than Me Is You by Lily Anderson and this book uh, was a really fun contemporary read. It was just super easy and I really enjoyed it. I did a book review video on this which I will leave a link to below if you guys want to watch that and um, that'll have all my in-depth thoughts on this book. So thank you guys for watching, that's all the books that I read this month and hopefully I will continue on the streak and read plenty more this month but I am also in a writing mood which means that I don't read it all when I'm writing which is so sad because it distracts me too much but hopefully my TBR will still keep going down. Thank you guys for watching and let me know the favourite book that you have read this month in the comments below. I'll see you guys next time and have a wonderful bookish day. A quick read that you'll probably enjoy. Coraline and Other Stories by Neil Gaiman. Direct Head by Elaine Webster. And this is such a bright book. Okay.